Hello and welcome to Chapter 2 of Marketing Principles or Principles of Marketing, BSBA 2204. Um, I hope that you've had a chance to uh, browse your Blackboard section by now and take a look and see how things are laid out. I hope that you find it easy to navigate. If you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me either by email or by phone. 304-367-4188 is my office number and we can always talk there or schedule some time to talk uh, after, uh, beyond my office hours. Um, Chapter two, we're going to be talking about partnering to build customer engagement, value, and relationships. And I want to sort of preface uh, my little video here. I, when I do these videos, I, I don't go over every slide. I do expect you to take a look at every slide and to read the chapter uh, in the textbook. But when I review the videos, I, I, I try to just highlight them. Other, uh, otherwise, I'd, you'd have a 90 uh, minute video to watch and I know you probably wouldn't want to do that and also typically an online course such as this doesn't even have the videos uh, it's just up to you to read the chapters and review the material and then take the quizzes however I like to do the videos I like for you to have some input from the instructor myself and uh, get a little bit of a little bit more information from what you might get uh, just from the textbook so, but again, as we go through this chapter, remember that I, I don't go over every single slide. Uh, I try to highlight the most important ones, but it's still up to you to, to take a look and study everything that's in the chapter. Uh, there's your learning objectives for this chapter. And the first one is going to take a look at strategic planning. The only thing I want to talk about strategic planning is companies have to decide what they're really good at and plan around that in order to make profit, uh, in order to be successful. In other words, they take a look at their strengths and their mission, which we'll talk about in a minute, and, and they really try to plan the activities of the company around those strengths and that mission. And if you take a look at uh, strategic planning, one of the first uh, steps is defining that company mission. Um, we'll talk about mission statements in a minute, but looking at that mission and figuring out what the company is all about helps the company set objectives and goals and design their business and services portfolio so that they can uh, offer customers value and in turn receive uh, revenue from sales and make a profit and of course stay in business. A mission statement for any company is fairly broad, non-specific, and it sort of just talks about what the company wants to accomplish, what they actually are, uh, in ex what do they exist for. And so if you took a look at uh, a couple, three mission statements, not a couple, but a three, um, I'll see if you can guess which ones, which companies these are. So the, the first one is to refresh the world in mind, body, and spirit, to inspire moments of optimism and happiness through our brands and actions, to create value and make a difference. Second one, people working together as a lean global enterprise to make people's lives better through automotive and mobility leadership. So that might be a little bit easier one than the first one. And the third one's even easier, I think, to inspire and nurture the human spirit, one person, one cup, and one neighborhood at a time. So if you guessed or thought that the third one was Starbucks, you would be absolutely right. That is Starbucks' mission statement. The second mission statement in the middle, you probably thought, well, that's probably a, some type of car manufacturer. You're right. It's Ford Motor Company. And the first one is a little bit less, uh, not so easy to, to guess. But if you guessed, anyone have an idea? Yes, you're right. Coca-Cola. That's Coca-Cola's mission statement. So you can see, though, that each of these mission statements is fairly broad, nonspecific, but yet gives the company direction, gives the company a reason to exist. And we're going to talk about objectives. And here, this slide talks about business objectives versus marketing objectives. One thing I want, I want you to note is if you take a look at the marketing objectives, they are more a little bit more specific than the business objectives. And you can usually put numbers to them, market share numbers, 
uh, dollars for budgets and so forth. What is a business portfolio? Well, portfolio is simply what the, the businesses and services that make up the company. All the businesses and services that they offer their customers are in that company's business portfolio. And businesses have to uh, constantly be analyzing their portfolio to make sure that it aligns with the company's strengths and missions. Sometimes larger companies can uh, divert away from their uh, original purpose. General Electric is a very good example of this, whereas at one time General Electric was simply the maker of appliances. They became such a huge company that at one point they owned NBC, the television network. They no longer own NBC, but they have shed a lot of their uh, businesses and services that they once offered and now are merely a, a small uh, skeleton of what they used to be. Strategic business units, or SBUs, are uh, product lines within a division. So if you took a look at the Mercedes, uh, Mercedes Benz company, you would find that they offer luxury vehicles, vans and buses, and industrial tractor and trailers or tractors. Uh, these are three specific business units within Mercedes Benz. Companies identify those strategic business units that they have. They make assessments on the attractiveness of each one, and they decide how much money they're going to put forth in each of those strategic business units and how much they deserve. So in the United States, you will find Mercedes-Benz puts a lot of money into the promotion and production of luxury vehicles. However, they put a little less in vans and uh, buses and far less in the industrial tractor division. Now overseas, such as in Germany, you, they would put a lot more emphasis in the tractor, but you don't see that many uh, Mercedes-Benz tractors in the industrial market here in the United States. Companies classify uh, businesses based on market share and the market growth rate that those products are uh, exist in. So a company such as, let's say, Coca-Cola has the regular Coca-Cola would be a cash cow. It's in, it has a relatively high market share in uh, a market growth rate that's probably fairly low. The growth rate in beverages, soft drink industry, is probably fairly low, especially sugar drinks. And um, this basically uh, helps companies decide where their products, are their products worth keeping? such as a cash cow or a star, or are they are their products uh, in a classification such as a dog, which has a low relative market share in a, uh, in a market that has a very low growth rate, this is a product they probably would want to get rid of. But this is the Boston Consulting uh, Group's growth share matrix. It's very well known, and you may have seen it even in high school but uh, you will hear more about it through uh, various courses that you take here at Fairmont State, and you'll hear about it in industry as well. It's, it's been used for many, many years. When companies take a look at where they want to go with their products, they might look at market penetration, product development, market development, or diversification. Diversification would be a new product in a brand new market. So this would be something new for the company. Uh, for Coca-Cola, that might be, well, let's just say they decided that they are going to make uh, healthy snacks. And that would be a new product. Um, and let's say it's a healthy snack with caffeine. And let's say that's a new market. That would be diversification in that market. And they could classify what they're doing as diversification and spreading and expanding their business. However, if they had existing products in an existing market, such as Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola tries to penetrate the market and increase their market share even further. 
So market penetration, product development, diversification, and market development. I've given you, I've given you a couple examples. Make sure that you study this and you understand and try to think of some examples yourself of which, which fits where. You might see something on a quiz that gives you uh, an explanation of a product and you tell me whether it's penetration, market penetration, product development, diversification, or market development. A company that gets smaller uh, or sheds itself of business units that aren't profitable, when they do that, there that's considered downsizing. A value chain is when uh, companies partner with other companies to build customer relationships. And so this can be internally as well as externally. So I'm going to give you an example of a minute, but a value chain is a series of departments that carry out value, creating activities to design, produce, market, deliver, and support a firm's products. So if here you see uh, basically the marketing mix. So this can be internal. So it could be the marketing department, finance, research and develop, manufacturing, accounting, and logistics, all working together to create value for the consumer. So possibly pricing the product at a fair price, delivering it, logistics, uh, so that the customer gets it when they want it, support through marketing. And, and so this value chain extends internally, but it also extends externally. This is an example of an internal market. But externally, value chains actually exist through a value delivery network. And that's when uh, a company partners with, its, with suppliers and distributors in order to bring the customer value. So up until recently, Amazon used FedEx quite frequently to ship their products from their warehouses. And they created this value chain, this network, where uh, Amazon and FedEx um, they basically partnered so that customers would get their packages, especially prime customers, in a very uh, quick manner. But what recently happened between Amazon and FedEx is FedEx got fed up with the low price that Amazon offered them to deliver their products and said, we're no longer going to deliver overnight packages for Amazon. And then Amazon said, well, we're not going to ship any products through Amazon. They've since both sort of uh, negotiated. And I believe now that FedEx does deliver, uh, at least the FedEx ground does deliver Amazon packages. But you can see before this little feud began, uh, how this partnership uh, was creating value for customers. So partnering with others in the marketing system to build customer relationships. Real quick here, don't get overwhelmed by this uh, graphic, but I do want you to look at the marketing mix, product, price, promotion, and place, the four P's. We're going to talk about segmentation and targeting here in a minute, uh, but you can see how all this works together with uh, intermediaries, competitors, public, uh, the public, and suppliers, and the customer value and relationships being at, at the center. Try, so that we're really trying to engage the customer and create value so that we get a repeat customer and we get customers that are loyal to us. Uh, you can take a look at this. I'm not going to uh, go over this uh, in detail to, tonight. Um, what is market segmentation? Well, basically companies take a look at markets and all the different markets that are out there and they segment them based on needs or certain characteristics or behaviors. So uh, individuals in your age group, generally in their, let's say 18 to 24, that you are in a certain market segment. Whereas people who are older, let's say in the neighborhood of uh, 60 to 70 years old, senior citizens, they are in their own market segment. And so, when we segment the market, we're able to uh, really target our products towards that market segment. So Chevrolet or General Motors, they target all segments of the market, but they do this through their brands. 
So an older, uh, more affluent group of customers, such as senior citizens, were, are going to be marketed the Cadillac brand, whereas young, uh, young adults just out of college or high school, are they're going to be more targeted with the smaller Chevrolet cars like the Chevy Cruze. That is called market segmentation and it's also called targeting. So this is where we're actually taking a look at the segments and trying to decide what products we're going to offer those segments. And if you took a look here, these young, this young group of young, this group of young adults are going to be primarily targeted by General Motors through the smaller cars or the Chevrolet Cruze. Whereas the older individuals who maybe are in retirement and have a little bit more disposable income are going to be targeted possibly with the Cadillac brand. And so that is targeting a market and evaluating each market's attractiveness uh, based on the products that you have and then selecting. And one thing you might remember uh, when I was in business, one of, the, one of the most valuable lessons that I learned when I owned my own business was you can't be all things to all customers. And that has a lot to do with market segmentation and market targeting. Market positioning is where we try to make uh, our products appear in a certain uh, place uh, to the customer. So, for instance, um, I don't know if the next... That's not a very good example. Uh, the market positioning of a Chevy Cruze is uh, affordable, good gas mileage, um, very utilitarian, offers uh, durable. And so it has this position in the market of just that. Whereas the position of the market in for the Cadillac would be luxury vehicle, uh, expensive, uh, very uh, lots of features inside, lots of convenience, and so forth. So that's positioning, that's market positioning, arranging for a product to occupy a clear, distinct place relative to competing products in the minds of the target consumers. And they, they do that through differentiation, basically. That begins that positioning process. What makes this product different from its competition? And Believe it or not, a Cadillac does compete for automotive dollars with the Cruze, although not directly. Uh, but uh, a Cadillac, a Cadillac might uh, compete with, say, a Mercedes-Benz or a Lexus. This is just a, a, another example of positioning uh, through uh, the example of L'Oreal. Targeting through brands we talked about. General Motors has Chevrolet, GMC, Buick, and Cadillac. All of these brands are targeted towards a certain segment of the market. So firm segment so that they have focus. The segmentation is, you know, taking all these uh, groups of people, trying to put them in a, a homogeneous group that, you know, they have like uh, very the, the very same taste and income and maybe age certain demographics are the same and so taking that segmentation and targeting towards those certain segments of the market and then positioning so the STP process is segmentation targeting and positioning and again like I said earlier firms can't be everything to every customer they have to pick and choose which segments they're going to go after by through targeting and then once targeting positioning that product in the minds of the consumer as a luxury vehicle that's a good value with lots of features and so forth marketing mix we've talked about but it's basically the four P's product, price, place, and promotion. And we talked about that in the very first chapter. But each product in a, in a company's portfolio has its own distinct marketing mix. Here's just a, I really like this um, uh, graphic that shows the four P's or the marketing mix and how it's centered around the target customers 
and you have this intended positioning. But look at all the different varieties of product. One thing I want you to take note here is take a look at some of these. You know, the product within the product you has you have variety, you have different uh, levels of quality, different designs, different features, different brand names, packaging could be different services. Within price, you have um, list price, you have uh, discounted price, credit terms, promotion, you get, we have advertising, social media, direct and digital, public relations, and in logistics or place for distribution, we have different channels, locations, inventory, all of these things make up the marketing mix. So this is, this, this really gives you a good idea of what each element or each of the four P's, how, what it's involved in. I'm not too, I do want to talk about the SWOT analysis and you may have already heard of the SWOT analysis, which stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. But companies go through, uh, sometimes more than once a year through a SWOT analysis to see what their strengths are internally, what their weaknesses are internally and externally, their opportunities and threats. So take a look at this slide a little bit closer and know what those, uh, those are um, uh, here you see the assignment due next Tuesday don't uh, concern yourself with that this actually this slide here was one that I used during uh, my in-class section last semester here is parts of a marketing oh Siri thought I was talking to her she was mistaken uh, this is parts of a marketing plan. Do not concern yourself with this at this point. And I think that we are just about done with this slideshow. Yes, we are. That's chapter two in a nutshell. Um, again, study the chapter. Take a look at your PowerPoints. If you need to go back through this video uh, again, do so. I kept that down to around 22 minutes, which I'm pretty proud of. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know and uh, stay safe.